Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. In my last video, I used a CNC 3018 to make a plate and an E3D V6 heatsink mount for the Sapphire Plus Core XY printer. After last week's video, I modified the design a little bit to make it fit better and make it able to attach to some existing components like the BL Touch and the cooling fans. I added a hole at the back to make the cables easier to wire and two small holes for a cable tie to manage the cables. I also added another four screw holes to mount the fans. I wanted the angle and the length of the fans to be adjustable, so I made a slot instead of two screw holes. As the length of a Volcano hot end is longer than usual ones, I will also add a BL Touch extension plate to allow it to extend lower so it can reach the bed. So I have to mill the plate, two bars to attach the fan, and one BL Touch extension plate. Let's start with the X carriage plate. After I reprinted the PLA spindle mount with ASA, it's a lot more stable. I didn't experience the spindle suddenly dropping again, but there are still some problems with the Z-axis motor, as it can't provide enough torque to move the spindle up and down. Sometimes when you move 20 millimeters, it actually moves less than 20 millimeters, resulting in a deeper cut than what you set and causing the X and Y stepper motors to skip steps. This area was caused by that, but it's not a big deal. I can still use this plate. For the fan attached bars, I will use the machine for facing and milling the slots. My brother doesn't have the patience to wait for an hour for it to run a contour operation to cut them out so we took them to a miter saw to make two quick cuts. For the BL Touch extension plate, the whole process is quite smooth. The dimensions are accurate and it looks pretty good. Okay, all the parts are ready. I will now assemble everything back to the printer. Since some of the wires are actually a bit short, I will cut them and reconnect them with the short extension and connectors so I can manage the cables a little better. First, I will attach the two part cooling fans to the plate using the aluminum bar with a slot. Then, I will run all the wires through the hole at the back of the plate. Connect the thermistor and the heat cartridge to the volcano heater block and then screw back the heatsink with the heater block. Attach the heatsink cooling fan and run the cable through the same hole on the plate. Now, we can push the PTFE tube back to the hot end. Push it all the way through and mount the plate back to the X carriage. Finally, wrap all the cables with a cable loom and cut the zip ties. The lead screw support plate also needs to be removed, so it can provide enough clearance for the Volcano hot end. The new setup is now done, and it's not far from my original design. The first thing you need to do is set the Z offset, because the height of the hot end has been increased. Let's see how it works. First, I will print a test cube at a normal speed of 60 millimeters per second to make sure everything is working. The Volcano hot end melts filament consistently, and this test cube is basically perfect. Next, I will double the speed to 120 millimeters per second. As you can see, the whole X carriage is moving quite quickly, and the hot end is able to match with the speed. Take a look at the extruder. It's actually pushing the filament quite quickly. Let's compare the two cubes. The one printing at 120 millimeters per second is still nice. The X and Y are not as clear as the standard 60 millimeter per second cube. There are some cooling issues, but the hot end and extruder can both keep up with the speed. Next, I will try to double the speed again to 240 millimeters per second. Before, when I pushed this printer over 200 millimeters per second, the hot end couldn't melt the filament fast enough. This time, I will see if this Volcano hot end can do a better job. The print head is moving quickly, but the hot end is still capable of keeping up with the print speed. Obviously, the stock cooling fans are not doing great at this speed, and the cooling for the overhanging parts are looking bad. Let's compare all three cubes. 
the perfect one was printed at 60 millimeters per second. There were some minor issues with the 120 millimeters per second one, and the 240 millimeters per second one had some quite serious cooling issues. In order to fix that, I will add another fan to blow on the X side of the cube directly. If this can improve the print, I will consider upgrading the part cooling fans to more powerful ones. First, let's take a look at the X surfaces. The one printed at 240 millimeters per second with an extra fan looks much better than the one without the extra fan. Since the fan was placed on the left side, the left part of the X surface looks better. For the Y surfaces, there are no noticeable differences between them, as the extra fan didn't blow on this side. So I guess my assumption was correct. If we want to print at 240 millimeters per second or faster, the next upgrade would definitely be the fan. Since I didn't see the extruder having any problems at this speed, I won't change it to direct drive yet, as if I put the extruder on the X carriage, it will add more weight and affect the print quality at high speed. The Sapphire Plus printer works even better than before. As this printer has a very sturdy frame, the linear rails on all axes run very smoothly. It has a dual Z axis, and I added the G34 Auto Z Align feature and replaced the stock 3D Touch to a BL Touch. With this Volcano Hot End upgrade, it can print at high speed with pretty good quality. I think the print quality would be even better with more powerful cooling fans. As I mentioned earlier, the drawback of this upgrade is that you will lose some print volume on the Z-axis. This printer has a print volume of 300 by 300 by 350, and now the Z-axis can only travel 335 millimeters. So the trade-off for this hot end is 15 millimeters in Z height. I'm okay with that as I don't usually use the maximum Z height. If I need to, I can use other printers like the CR-10S Pro V2, which has a 400mm Z height. So depending on what you want to print, you can decide if you want this upgrade. I have put the STL files on Thingiverse. If you have a CNC, you can make the parts using aluminum. If not, you can still print them with higher temperature resisting filament like PETG or ASA. If you want to see how to upgrade the CNC3018 to cut aluminum, we can make a video to show how we upgraded it from the $149 stock machine, like adding the 500 watt spindle or the limit switches on all XYZ axes, the probe sensor, and configuring the firmware. Or if you're interested in the software part, like what software to use and how to control the CNC machine, or designing using Fusion 360 CAD, or using the Fusion 360 CAM to create tool paths and generate G-code, we can also make some not quite professional, but hopefully easy to follow tutorials, so that beginners can easily get started. Please leave a comment below and let me know. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week. You will lose 15 to 20 millimeters in print volume. I will assemble everything back to the printer next. Since, since, since some wires are actually I will cut some of them